Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We're now going straight into our first topical issue, and it's about the Lekki shootings. Over the weekend, the Nigerian army disbanded its legal team and pulled out from the judicial panel of inquiry that, you know, looking into allegations of police brutality and, of course, the shootings at the Lekki Tollgate on October 20th, 2020. A doctor at the Redditon Hospital, his name is Dr. Babajide Lawson. He was a witness at the judicial hearing and he testified that there was a mass casualty on the nights of October 20th, 21st and 22nd, with people coming in from the Lake Utah gates with gunshot wounds, bullets in their bodies, you know, to the hospital to get emergency treatment. Now, as a result of this, you know, the army has pulled out. We're now here to discuss this on The Breakfast with legal practitioner, Liberal Soshama. Good morning again. Yeah, good morning. Looking critically at this issue, is the army legally empowered to pull out of this hearing and investigation? Uh, I don't know. I'm always laughing, you know, because some of these issues are so funny and absurd. I just can't imagine, you know, a panel of inquiry into the deaths of um, people in a civilized society and the army of that country that is um, at the center of these allegations says we are out of this and we can no longer, you know, answer to anybody. Uh, we have said what we want to say, and the, all the officers that were summoned, you know, um, refused to show up, and nothing happens. And, and then tomorrow, somebody will say, oh, maybe they were not given fair hearing. It can only happen in Nigeria, where Ami would um, board a commercial vehicle and won't pay, would say, staff. Where Ami officers can drive one way, and nothing will happen. Where army officers can take BROT lane, it will take only the governor, you know, to stop them. It's um, where even court proceedings, court proceedings, the army will be summoned and they will fail to appear and nothing will But happen. legally, can they pull out of this investigation? They can't. That's what I'm saying. There's an inquiry going on and you are the center of this inquiry. Your actions and inaction is the center of investigation. And all of a sudden, you came once and subsequently disbanded your legal team, and then even when there are summons to you, you refuse to. The lawyer came and said, well, we have, um, the army has disbanded his legal team, and that's why the lawyer, the lawyer cannot, you know, represent the army when there's no instruction to that effect. There were officers that were specifically mentioned, the 81 Div um, GOC, uh, and then um, I think the commander also were specifically mentioned, mm. you know, even on that day. And the panel had sent, you know, summons to them to appear. And they had refused to appear. Even though this summon was routed through the office of the chief of army staff. You know, and if you remember why all of these are very instructive and interesting. If you remember at the inception of this, when this whole thing played out. The army denied involvement. Initially, we wanted to play it out as, oh, it is just, uh, it was unknown soldiers. Initially, they also said that they were not even there. And then subsequently, they admitted that they were there when they were confronted with overwhelming evidence. They now said, you know, nobody was shot at. Nobody died. Later, they admitted that, you know, some persons, about two persons died. Initially, it was one, then two. Later, they said, you know, the governor invited them to come assist so that they came. And then they came with bullets that uh, they were used, that blank bullets were used. But re reports by, you know, journalists like, you know, your stations and other stations also established the fact that live bullets were used because these were live bullet casing that were picked at the venue of All right, let, let, let's, mm -hmm. let's also talk about, you know, initially, I'm sure that you, we had a conversation a month ago about the um, powers that the judicial panel really has. So does this corroborate with that narrative that the judicial panel really doesn't even have the powers to investigate the army or the police? Yeah, I did say at that point that um, Section 1, Sub 1 of uh, the Lagos State um, Panel of Inquiry laws you know, does not empower the Lagos State Governor to set up inquiry into activities bordering on, you know, areas where that are outside their jurisdiction, like the police. But eventually the police appeared. 
And if initially the police challenged, police filed a suit at the Federal High Court challenging the powers of the tribunal. And we're like, oh, let's see how this will pan out. But I think in the wisdom of the Inspector General of Police, that was subsequently withdrawn. And then um, now the army, maybe they might challenge the powers. of. I, and that's why I said the inquiry for me would end up as a jamboree. You have seen advocates there, unfortunately, they are doing their job. And even if truly, indeed, we're looking for a solution to all of these problems or want to find out what happened, one would have expected that was the National Human Rights Commission that had broad powers and they have offices you know, in every state would be empowered to collaborate with the state to set up this inquiry. But that didn't happen. No, the state government, in its wisdom, it is, in fact, it is only Lagos State Government uh, panel that you see here of, have yes. you heard of other panel of, uh, from other states? What happened? And so the Lagos State Government, in its wisdom, despite you know, the provisions of the law setting up the panel of inquiry, did still you know, consider a panel of inquiry. It's okay, if for nothing at all, let them even have a report of what happened. And now you hear that um, the police first tried, they didn't succeed. The army, that is the, at the theater of all of this, you know, suddenly just withdrew from it. So what this says quickly is the fact that, you know, there are some people, some group and categories of agencies in Nigeria that are above the law. All right. So if you've said that the, this panel do not have enough judicial authority to, you know, pursue this case, can the Lagos State government who constituted this panel, or the federal government for that matter, you know, go ahead to compel the army to appear before the court, to appear before the hearing, to continue this investigation? The panel is, the army had appeared before it. The panel is constituted duly, and then the powers had not been challenged by anybody. The court had not ruled. This, that provision I cited is my opinion. The court had not ruled on it to say the panel does not have such power. Okay. So as we speak, legally speaking today, the, the powers of those panels exercisable by the members of the panel is, is you know, intact legally. Okay. And so, if there is no court order, you know, excusing the Nigerian army from appearing, the Nigerian army cannot, you know, it's a, the panel is a panel of inquiry. So, if at the end of the day, the only thing they can do is to either, when they fail to appear, to hear their own side of the story, they'll believe, you know, the evidence, testimonies, of, of a complainant against the army will be unchallenged and uncontroverted. And we all know that by the provisions of the Evidence Act, once evidence is unchallenged and uncontroverted, it is deemed admissible. The, the, the army is not there as a private um, institution, as a no. private company. Can this then be interpreted to mean that the Nigerian government itself is not interested wholeheartedly in finding truth and justice um, from what happened on the 20th of October. That's why I said that there are some agencies in Nigeria that are above the law. And if the government, the president, let's not even begin to talk about government. The president, let's, because the next question will be who are the government? Who is government? Who is the president? Who is the presidency? The president is not interested. And so if the president were interested, the best, the first thing to do would have been immediately insist, tell the chief, com compare the army, the chief of army staff, to ensure that, you know, the army, because we're in a civilian room, the army complies with rules and, and um, uh, order as constitutionally prescribed. And so, even though, even let's assume that the powers of the panel is to traverse the, the act or the laws, it is not in the army to sit down and say, this is the interpretation we got from our legal team. It is for them to approach the court and let the court make an order to that effect. You don't pick and choose which law to obey and mm. which law not to obey. Okay. And in the event that the president is the commander-in-chief of the Nigerian Armed Forces, that's his position, constitutionally donated to him. And the army is violating a, 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 a law, a constitutional law. What the president should do as the, the commander-in-chief is to ensure that the army is subservient to the law. Indeed. But the absence of that, the box stop at the table, what it means that with what we are saying, even if the army is indicted, even if some persons are indicted in the army, 
at the end of the day, they might either use them as sacrificial lamb, just retire them, and nothing will happen. All right. Or they will look the other way, as they have always done before. I give you an instance. In the case of Al-Mustafa, Al-Mustafa did say that some Ghana must go were carted from his house when um, the army raided his house and that the um, uh, DSS raided his house and that the materials were in the custody of the DSS. The DSS filed an application in court to say that the materials were handed over and tendered the document that the materials were handed over to the, the um, Army Intelligence Unit. And the court did also, there was an application by uh, Al Mustafa's lawyer for the, DS, for the Army Intelligence Unit to show cause. They never appeared, not for one day. They didn't even respond. Right. Mm. Uh, and I, nothing happened. I, want to, uh, you know, I also want us to quickly speak on how this reflects on the new Chief of Army Staff, Atari Ibrahim. Um, it's been barely a week uh, since he was um, you know, no nominated. Uh, of course, they're still, of course, waiting for approval. But what does this say, you know, about him? For me, in as far as I'm concerned, the chief of army, the new chief of army staff, has not taken over office because a seven cabinet minister in this government, Fessos Kiamu, did challenge the powers of the president to unilaterally appoint service chiefs without the concurrence approval of the national assembly. Yes. And the court, Justice Adamu Belu, did rule in his favor that the president does not have such powers. And so if you have President Mohamed Buhari in violation of that court order, now appointing service chiefs without complying with the second leg of concurrence and then they take suddenly just take office and then, you know, that's for me, it's not constitutional, especially coming from a minister in the cabinet. And these are the, the constitutional provisions that they criticize previous government you know, violating. They are also well, violating. It can, it can be said that, be that, that they're may. acting. Be that as it may, um, I have my reservations when it comes to these um, issues. Now, the service, the new service chief would be talking about Boko Haram, that their primary responsibility, but primary concern yes, would be how to, how to defeat Boko Haram as if they are fresh. They've been there. They've been at the theater of war, in some cases withdrawn for failure. And yet, now you begin to talk about <laughs> You know, fresh <laughs> ideas. And, but they forget that also the step he takes as regards the killings in Lagos would also add up to his, um, uh, his success and portfolio. His success or the precedence, his activities in office. Mm. When his memoirs will be written, he would be seen as one of the chief of army staff who did not do anything about the violation of the rules of the Nigerian military. So right. I would advise that the first thing to do now, they shouldn't treat this as one of such. Mm -hmm. The step that the former chief of army staff refused to take, he should take it and instruct the army to immediately, you know, return appear to. before, return to that panel. Especially given the fact that the, the uh, panel also is, insist, is saying that the forensic report from the independent forensic uh, auditor would be out in February this month. And so if that comes out, the army would need to go speak to the issues raised therein. Otherwise, right. it would be very disastrous. All right. Talking about speaking to the issues, we've all talked about the trust deficits between the Nigerian government and the people. And we saw how the government repeatedly denied allegations of shootings at the Legato Gate. We saw organizations, most notably CNN, releasing investigations that showed clearly that people were shot at by the army. But now... We saw that Dr. Lawson has said, this is what happened at Reddington Hospital. People were brought in who were shot at with bullets. Where does this now leave the people and the government with regards trust when they're saying one thing, but evidence proves otherwise? You see, we have um, a very big problem in as far as uh, trust is concerned. And then the government is not doing anything about it. And they don't even intend to do anything. Do you know why? Because our votes, we are not serious as a people. We have not um, insisted that our votes will count. We don't, we don't see election here as a serious tool. And that's why the government do not believe that you voted them into office. They believe that they can always get into office without, with or without you. Yes. And until we begin to make you know, such impact. Now, I, I expect that, um, with, um, like I said something last time, uh, after that election, uh, after the NSAS protest, the um, senatorial election that I had in Lagos State, 
those that had card, I expected to see massive turnouts, but nothing happened. So we all went back to sleep. So that means we still do not understand the impact of election. And we're saying, some were saying, oh, look, because we don't have voters' cards, even if you, at the INEC, you know, starts continuous voters' registration today, a lot of people that went to protest will still mm -hmm. not go out to register. Uh, um, because, quickly, I'm, 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 yeah. I'm trying to lay foundation to this, because we do not understand that the only way we can change leadership and make people accountable to us is through election. So when you have that process intact and the people can decide, that's the only way government will take trust, the yeah. trust that you will have in them seriously. Without that, they know that you didn't vote for them, they read them themselves into office. And so why would they want to even you know, win your trust? So we need right. to exercise our franchise. We need to exercise our franchise to ensure that you know, everything they do is based on trust. And that's why the government can tell you, we didn't deploy army. Only for them to come the next day and say, we deployed army. And then we are, we are, we are happy. Okay, so I want to do a follow-up to, you know, something she already brought up. Last week, we spoke about compensation for police officers. Yes. Um, about 160 million, I believe, uh, for police officers, um, families that were, uh, lives were lost during the protest. Um, but we still are unable to get to a conversation about compensation for victims of, you know, that pro um, protest. Um, it almost seems like the government, you know, doesn't want to accept that there were any victims whatsoever. Um, how does this, you know, uh, how do you think the people would interpret this? And, you know, would you maybe call this unfair to the citizens? Uh, there's, in, in Nigeria, the government is never fair to the citizens. And that's why I'm telling you that. They will nobody take you seriously until you take yourself seriously. The only way they can take you seriously is when they know that your vote means a lot, that thumb, that one. Why do you think during election, campaigns can get to anywhere, the, including the hinterland, but after election, development for development to get to those places becomes very difficult. And then they begin to create excuses because they know that, you know, your, you do not even take yourself seriously. And that's why we'll talk about compensation for the police officers. Uh, no matter how small, it is good for everybody to be compensated, good or bad. Because there are some persons, there are allegations that even some of the police officers who were uh, in areas where police stations were burned down, that is the attitude of the police officers therein. In some cases, police were alleged to have shot directly at innocent protesters. What happened to those people? Now we pretend as if, you know, nothing happened to them. In some cases, government would even, you know, surreptitiously say, you know, the youth brought this upon themselves. But one thing they forget to realize is that today, the youth might not be united. But they will not always be like this. A time will come when the educated will be united with the uneducated. Right. And they will re re refer to these days and what happened. Okay. Even if you are not there, your children will be there. If you like, send them abroad. They will come back here someday and they will come meet these people that you neglected. And they, those people might be in charge at that time. So that's why we need to do it right now. No matter how small, ensure that you identify those that died you know, carelessly and ensure that compensation is paid, paid appropriately and treat everybody whether big or small you know very importantly and then the army should this is we are in a democratic dispensation they should you know forget this military hangover of having to rule nigeria over time and say believe they are untouchable and some of those officers that uh, were mentioned they were summoned they should do everything to ensure that they appear including even lobbying their, their, their bosses. All right. Because they might throw them, you know, under the, under the train, Thank if you. need be. <laughs> Thank right. you, Mr. Shuma. I wish you could speak to this in 30 seconds. People have been saying that the army should be tried at the International Criminal Court. Is this a long shot, yes or no? It would be difficult for, for that to happen. All the right. International Criminal, Criminal Court already has its handful. Let us, you know, try them. Let's yeah. do it ourselves. Yeah, let's right. do it ourselves. Let's get okay. it done ourselves. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Mr. Libor Sashama, for your time and thoughts on The Breakfast. My pleasure. This is where we draw the curtains on this segment. We'll now be turning to talk about politics and an allegation that the National Assembly padded the budget up to 500 billion naira for 2021. And that's after this.